In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the biggest disagreements in personality psychology, namely, what is more important, your behavior or your values and goals. First of all, let's think about it this way. Your behavior is scientific and measurable. Do you do it or do you not do it? The truth is, can we really measure values? Can we really measure goals? How do we really know if somebody actually has a goal or value or not? It's all subjective, isn't it? And so why should we even care about it? This is why a lot of people, especially those focusing on the big five instrument, tend to focus on and create inventories that are purely based on your behavior. These systems are behavioral because behavior is scientific values and intentions that are happening inside here, cannot be measured, cannot be tested. And so we have to think about how we can align these two dimensions and whether this one is even worth looking at to begin with. People who work with the Myers-Briggs type indicator tend to focus on your values and goals. You might not even know that's what they're asking, but that's why they ask if you get energy from doing something or not. That's why they ask whether you like to do something or not, whether you value doing it or not, whether you find it motivating, fun, engaging, enriching, energizing. These kind of questions are meant to track for and understand what do you really want to do? Do you value self-expressions? Do you want decisions to be based on evidence? Or do you care more if they're based on logic? They're asking all these kind of questions to try to gosh, um, get an idea of what kind of a person you are. If you value making decisions more based on logic and not necessarily based on fact, well, you might be a person that really values being seen as a logical and intelligent, clever person. And if you're a person that values uh, decisions based on emotions, well, you might be a person that values authenticity a lot. So the Myers-Briggs Institute focuses on all these kind of scales and try to understand all these different matters in order to kind of gosh, what kind of things would motivate you? What kind of things would give you energy? What kind of things would make you happy? The problem of this dimension is that your values can be completely out of whack. What I mean with this is that, uh, in short, you can say that you want to be an honest person, but you can find yourself lying in most situa situations and manipulating people. And so the question is, if you care, say you care about something, if you say you value something, why are you doing something completely different to that? It's these kind of questions that uh, give rise to most kind of identity issues and co internal conflicts in most people. We can feel a lot of stress when we and our actions are incongruent with our beliefs. Sometimes we'll pretend they don't happen. Sometimes we'll pretend uh, like we'll ignore it or we we'll say, ah, oh, it's a temporary hiccup or I was under a lot of stress. So you come up with excuses for it. Uh, but it really eats you up when you say that you care about something or when you feel that something is important, but when you don't live in accordance with your beliefs. So this desire is even considered to be a need. Maslow said that you know, self-actualization, you know, finding a job or a lifestyle or a relationship where you can be yourself authentically is one of the highest needs in a person and one of the most important in terms of you know, uh, feeling and uh, being happy as a person and being feeling fulfilled. So we'd like to ideally kind of try to think about and align all these scales. And I have a way of looking at it. I tend to think of it as four different poles. At the very top, you have what you do, your actual behavior paired with your goals and values. When these two are in line with each other's, when they are shaking hands, that's good. That's you. That's your personality type. That's who you are. Then on that side, on the right, you've got what you want to do, but don't necessarily do at the moment. For example, you might value being creative, but you never go to any art museums, you never engage in any form of creative expressions. You think about doing it, but you're too perfectionistic. So you got the problem there. Basically, you say you want to be creative, but you're not. So that's your future personality, your potential personality, you could say. On the other side of that, on the very opposite of that, you got what you do, because there's tons of things that you do. You might be stuck in this routine of traditions and things that you do that you don't really like doing. And so you keep doing these things for self-preservation purposes, perhaps, or because you were taught to do so, or because your environment encouraged you to do it. But that's not who you are. It's not what you want to be like. Ultimately, there's something inside of you that burns to be free from that and to like release yourself and to allow yourself to engage more in that creative free-spirited lifestyle that you dream about, that potential that you see for yourself. Below that, you've got all those things that you don't really care about doing and that you don't really do in the first place. You don't care about, for example, whether or not uh, you are um, 
like enjoying life or not or hedonism or things like that you know uh, that doesn't really matter to you it's a blind spot so you gotta think about all these scales together like that and so you gotta ask yourself like am i living the life i want to live am i doing and acting in accordance with my beliefs and when we think about it from a personality psychology standpoint we gotta think of ourselves is this system is this mbti actually helping me understand my values in relation to real life scenarios because the problem today is it's not it doesn't really track whether you're actually being and acting congruently with your decisions. It doesn't really give you an idea of how you live or what kind of work you do in the present and whether that connects to what you do. So you gotta start thinking and asking yourself those questions yourself at the moment. Similarly, when you take the big five inventory, I'd say be very, very careful not to confuse what you do with who you are. If you get a result in the big five, but you say, that's not what I want to be, that's not my ideal, then ask yourself, what can I do to change that?